welcome back to my channel folks poetic does it and today i'm having lamb chops with rice pilaf and chopped spinach now normally when you see my meat it's already in the package that didn't sound right but uh, you know what i mean check out my chops here i've already uh rinsed them and seasoned them uh let me break down what the seasoners are but you can season as you like this is just the way i do it i season with some um garlic powder ground black pepper, onion powder, and seasoned salt. By Laris! Now you see the rosemary and the garlic cloves there, as well as the butter. That's what I'm going to do when I pre-season my pan. I'm going to get those flavors popping inside my hot pan, and then I'm going to pop my lamb chops in. This is real simple to do, folks. A lot of people think it's hard to cook lamb chops, but I'm about to show you how to do it. All right, the first thing I'm starting off with is the rice aroni rice pilaf. And I'm going to check out the uh, nutrition facts and the instructions. Let's see. Okay, again, as I always say, if you're checking your salt, check out your salt content. The instructions aren't so hard. It's pretty simple. Two tablespoons of butter or margarine, two cups of water, put in a large carrots, combine the rice pasta, blah, 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 blah. So what I'm going to do is get my pan heated. I'm going to go ahead and add the butter to so get that butter going on. Now you can just add uh, the butter in there and let it melt. Or you can wish it around like I'm doing with my knife. It doesn't hurt. I just like to coat it pretty fast to get it popping. You know, and I don't want it to turn brown. It will turn brown because that's what butter does. But if your butter is turning brown as soon as you put it inside the pan... Turn down your temperature. So I'm going to get that all good and melted. I'm going to pop the rice in. Interesting facts about this. Didn't know it was rice and pasta. Ain't that cool? What we want to do is make sure the pasta is golden brown. Okay, I couldn't find my spatula, so I grabbed the spoon here. It don't matter. As long as you brown the pasta, you'll be good. And once the pasta gets all nice and golden brown, we're going to go on to our next step. But you want to make sure you constantly kind of maneuver the rice and pasta around so it's even. You don't want like partially brown pasta. You want to get it all, you know, done at the same time so you get those great flavors. See the difference? Now I'm going to add two cups of water. Then I'm going to add the seasoning. See that? Pop it in there. And then I'm going to stir this up, get it incorporated. It's already boiling, but the idea is to stir it in when it comes to a boil. I'm going to put a lid on it and let it simmer to about 22 minutes or until that rice gets real tender. You don't want no crunchy rice. Add the top and lower my temperature. I'm going to probably switch eyes because now I want to get started on the spinach. Okay, getting my spinach started. I put a little water at the bottom. I'll say maybe a tablespoon of water at the bottom. Just a little bit to wet the whistle. I'm using chopped spinach. You can use whatever kind of spinach you like. You can use the whole leaf spinach. Shoot, you don't even have to use spinach. Go ahead and toss this in there. So 
a lot in one bag. When it thaw out, that water is going to help steam and cook the spinach. I'm also going to add one tablespoon of butter because I don't like my, my spinach bitter. Some people might like that. I don't. I'm also going to add a couple of turns of pink Himalayan salt. You can season this whatever flavors you like. I like mine with salt. You can use this kind or the uh, Morton salt. Depends on what you like. Now, for this, for now, I'm going to do a couple turns. And then once it melts all the way, I'm going to taste it and see how much more salt I need to add. Because if you don't, it'll be bitter. So I'm going to let that go ahead and do its thing. We got the rice already doing this thing. The spinach should be up next. Doesn't take long for these two to get done. And then I can start on the meat. And if you're wondering why I didn't do the meat first, it's because that don't take long at all either. I could have all this going at once, but with the sizzling sounds of the meat, you might not be able to hear what I'm saying on camera. So that's going to take a hot second. I'm gonna come back and see what, how pretty that's looking. Then we come back and check on the rice. Let's check on our rice. Oh, yeah, look at that. I'm make sure it's not sticking. It's got that simmer going. Look at that. So I'm going to give it a taste to see if they are soft. That's done. Let me bring some up so you can see the deliciousness. Yep, everything is nice and soft. Not too soft because you don't want overdone rice. Okay, let me check on my spinach. All right, let's see. See, the butter melted. Some of the water is also on up. I'm going to add just a little more water. I kind of like a wet spinach this time. If you watched my other videos, you might have noticed I used, uh, when I ate the spinach, it was more of a dry spinach with just the seasoning and the butter. I kind of want some juice, some spinach juice going on. I want to cut my heat down because that spinach is done. And this is the point where I'm going to give it a taste to see if I need to add any more butter or any more salt. Look at that. Alright. That is good. It's buttery, but not as buttery as I would like. So I'm going to add, I'll say this is going to be a teaspoon of butter. Um, I want to add butter. Uh, not, not, not plastic. We don't want that. Now, getting ready for the star to show the lamb chops. First, you want to have your pan on the side, 
heating up maybe on a low setting so it don't burn the butter when you pop it in but we're going to cut up these garlic cloves we're going to add two to three tablespoons of butter in the pan while it's heating and after we do that we're going to add the rosemary leaves to the butter real simple to do the rosemary kind of gives the lamb chops an extra burst of flavor it's something special about that rosemary i can't i can't explain it but it's good y'all got some of the garlic here i'm just going to cut them up about that size the garlic is pretty much for aromatics the garlic and rosemary Also adds a little more flavor. You can cut up as little or as much as you like of the garlic. It depends on your taste. You also don't want to have your pan preheating too high because if you do, when you add the butter, the butter is going to burn. And also, just in case I didn't mention, we're also going to use one tablespoon of vegetable oil while we're cooking. That's one tablespoon. If you have olive oil, that would be better. You can add olive oil first, then butter to your pan. But I don't have any olive oil fresh out. So, I'm going to use vegetable oil. Okay, like I said, I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. I got about six chops. And again, like I said, you gotta make sure your temperature is not too high so the butter doesn't turn brown immediately. For reference, my stove is on four right now. Just for the butter. Or just for the warming of the pan. The butter's gonna turn brown anyway. Now I'm gonna add in my garlic. Now the rosemary, it depends on what you like. You can use this rosemary, or you can use fresh rosemary. Depends on what you like. I'm going to use about that much. Sprinkle it in there. If you notice me doing that, I was squeezing the rosemary and I did that because when it's dry you're using dry herbs you want to make sure you rub it because it brings out more of the flavor since it is dried I'm gonna grab the spoon here I know it's the same spoon I've been using with everything but hey it's okay Now still on four, so I'm kind of sauteing the garlic. You can see the little middles are popping out there. Now I'm going to get a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And what the vegetable oil does, it low key stops the butter from burning. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know if it drops the temperature. But that's what it does. It's been a real good there. Okay. I think I'm ready for the meat. As you can see, these are lamb chops. These lamb chops come from a wreck of lamb. You know, you just cut the, the chops off 
you can also get larger lamb chops which are pretty much similar to um, pork chops in size they're similar to pork chops in size and those are called lamb chops as well now when I add my meat I'm going to turn up the temperature Just like that. Smells good. Yeah, I'm gonna bring everything down. Get those in between there. Even on top. Now, you don't want to overcook these. If you cook them too well done, they will taste gamey. They will taste gamey than a mug. It'll taste like you just killed the lamb yourself and bit into it. You want to have these at medium rare or medium. I prefer medium. Some people also soak these in buttermilk or some other buttermilk cream concoction to pull out the gaminess flavor. Um, I don't do that. I just make sure I don't overcook them. Keeping an eye on them constantly. Perhaps using a thermometer. As you know, I've seen, you've seen you guys use a thermometer a lot. You can tell if you're familiar with cooking these when they need to be flipped. That's why you gotta keep a close eye because it's real easy to overcook these. open my my thing thing cheers to y'all thanks for joining me I'm gonna give them a look Ooh. time to flip has a nice crust Oh yeah, they got a nice little crust on them. Don't mind little blood, that happens. Close that one. You know what? These tongs suck. Look at that. First, let's get started with some of this delicious rice pilaf, steaming hot. Mm. Nice and soft, nice amount of flavor. The spinach, hope it's focused. All right. Got the right amount of seasonings there. All right. Now, 
for the lamb chops. Got some garlic on there. Give it a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Full of flavor. As you can see there, I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's nice and medium. Very seasoned. Mmm. No gaminess. That's some good shit right there. Okay, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for showing your support. Please hit the like, comment, and make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to cut on your notification bells to be notified each and every time I post a vid or a short. And hey, stay tuned. More stuff to come. Thanks again for watching. Peace.